Hey, Breaking Points, Marshall here. Check out Sagar and my realignment podcast interview with Scott Galloway about his new book, Adrift, America in 100 Charts. If you'd like to see the full conversation, go to our YouTube channel, The Realignment Podcast, or check us out wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hope you enjoy it. I think my generation has absolutely implemented a set of deliberate policies. There's this delusion of complexity around mm-hmm. the issues that ail us and that these are big problems, structural issues, and all these forces that are outside of our control have all come together to basically take the wealth of people under the age of 40 and take it from 20% of our GDP or 19% of our GDP to nine, that we accidentally fucked your generation. It was not accidental. It was purposeful. Take the two biggest tax deductions, mortgage interest and capital gains. Who owns a home and who owns stock? People my age. Who rents and gets their income from current income? People your age. Mm -hmm. What do you need to get ahead? You need education. What field has gone up 1,400% on an inflation-adjusted basis? Education. I mean, just who gets cost, who's about to get the biggest cost of living adjusted increase in history? Social Security recipients who happen to be old people. Who gets bailed out during these crises? Old people. It goes on and on and on about uh, uh, everything we do is to affect a transfer of wealth from people your age to people of my age. So uh, first off, there's just more headwinds in your face than there was in my generation. To be born in 1964, a white heterosexual male in California meant you got near free education from UCLA and Berkeley. My total tuition from UCLA undergrad and Berkeley grad was $7,000. In addition, it was accessible. The admissions rate at UCLA when I applied was 76%. Now it's 6%. So it's not only more expensive for people in your generation, it's less accessible because my generation has entered into this nimbious rejectionist bullshit complexion where uh, once I have my degree, I like that it's hard for you to get a degree because that makes my degree more valuable. Once I have a house, I'm going to put in place all sorts of zoning restrictions that don't make it easy to build new housing because I want my house to go up in value. And once I have a company that's hugely successful, I'm going to spend a ton of money to try and make it impossible for new companies to emerge. So we have this deliberate transfer of wealth from your generation to my generation. So the first is we absolutely need to say, okay, This has happened. We decided it could happen. So we need to unhappen it and not throw up our arms and say, oh, we can't figure this out. Um, In terms of where I would go, I think about this a lot. Advice to young people. Um, One, I would get to a city. Just you want to have the winds at your back. It's just much easier. I don't know if either of you surf, but occasionally I'll surf somewhere where there's an incredible offshore breeze and and perfect waves. And I talk myself into believing I'm a good surfer. No, I'm not. (laughs) You're you're a great surfer because of the perfect conditions. And then I surf in, you know, real waves, and I realize I don't know how to surf. You want to pick the right beaches, and there's just a few basics. You want to get to a city. Two thirds of economic uh, value or increases in economic value are going to happen in 20 super cities over the next 20 or 30 years. Even with COVID, you're just you'd rather be good in a city than great in a smaller city. You want to get certified for all the the criticism that people don't own college. It's a defense mechanism to make them feel better about the fact that they're being rejected or can't afford it. It's still uh, the graduates of my class at Stern. The average salary is two hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Wow, that's the average. Meaning, someone if is only making one hundred and ten at a nonprofit, there's there's someone <laughs> making three hundred, and these kids are twenty eight, twenty nine. So college, especially at elite universities, is still paying off. Um, I would focus a lot, I mean, this sounds uh, strange, but on mental and physical toughness. Um, Work out, try and work out four or five times a week. I think it makes you less prone to depression. It makes you feel better about yourself. It makes you more confident in the pursuit of mates. Uh, It gives you the endurance. When I worked at Morgan Stanley right out of UCLA, uh, I wasn't as well educated as the rest, not because UCLA wasn't a great institution, but because I spent the majority of my five years smoking pot and watching Planet of the Apes. I just was not as skilled as my peers. So I decided every week, Tuesday morning, I'd go to work and I wouldn't leave till Wednesday night. I'd work through the night. I would work 36 hours straight. And I got a reputation as that crazy guy uh, who rode crew at UCLA who used to come in every Tuesday morning and leave Wednesday night. 
And it sent a signal that I was there to play. And it, it, I could do it. I didn't have a wife. I didn't have dogs. I had nothing going on. And I was physically really strong. And I was mentally strong, uh, mostly from playing sports. And I think, that fi I, I think young people want to figure out a way to lift heavy weights and run long distances in their mind and in the gym. I think physical and mental toughness, really pushing yourself while you're young, is incredibly powerful. Um, and then I think trying to take a certain amount of your day to invest in relationships really efficiently. Quick text messages. I admire you. I was thinking about you. I thought what you did today in that meeting was really impressive. Um, so education, getting to a city, physical and mental strength. Um, you know, the, trying to guess which category. I mean, you know, anything near processing power or software is probably going to anything around fintech. I think probably the greatest disruption or an interesting place to be would to try and position yourself at the intersection between technology and healthcare, the largest mm -hmm. industry in America that I think is just so ripe for disruption. I would have said that about education, but I keep waiting for the disruption and it keeps not happening. But loosely speaking, some best practices around being physically and mentally tough, getting certified and getting to the right uh, geography. And before you collect dogs and kids, get to a city because once you collect those things, it's very hard to stay in a city. Um, and also, and it sounds very boomerish, give up uh, the notion of balance. Uh, you can have it all. You just can't have it all at once. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows somebody who is makes a shit ton of money, has great relationships, is in good shape, has a food blog, and donates time at the SPCA. Assume you are not that person. I did nothing or pretty much nothing but work in my 20s and 30s. It cost me my hair. It cost me my marriage, and it was worth it. I have a lot of balance now. And the reason I have balance is because I have the economic freedom to have balance because unfairly, your career trajectory at your age, at 30, is uh, un unfairly important because it's like a rocket. The soup to get out of the atmosphere, the amount of fuel you have to burn to get to, uh, out of inner space because it's so thick, is you have to burn so much fuel. And then once you get to a point where you have some money to invest, a reputation, contacts, some credibility, if you can go into space with that trajectory, I just get further faster on less fuel than you do right now. Right. Because, but God, get out of that inner space. And there's just no getting around it. It's just a lot of work. It's a, it gets more competitive every day. I don't know anybody that wasn't smart enough to uh, uh, inherit wealth or wasn't smart enough to inherit wealth that is really successful, that hasn't had a 10 or 20 year stretch where they were really burning it from both ends. Mm -hmm. Quick follow up on this. So Scott, you know this, I'm sure listeners know this, Stern is an incredible school. When I'm thinking about folks who are struggling with college right now, I'm thinking of a person who went to second or third tier directional state university or even a private college and has just too much debt mm -hmm. during their 20s in search of something that wasn't really going to be there. What would your advice be to folks who are kind of trying to treat this moment as a reset point, considering maybe you got some student debt written off, all those different bits, things? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, the transfer of wealth of one and a half trillion dollars from middle class homes to universities in the form of student debt some of it's still worth it. I, it. I mean, when I was going to school, I borrowed money to get through undergrad, I borrowed money to get through grad. It was just a no-brainer. It was just a good deal. And what universities have done is they've captured that surplus benefit. They've taken it back. And to spend, to borrow $100,000 to get a history degree from a tier two university, for the first time, it's not entirely obvious that you're, that's gonna work. And to shove paperwork in front of an 18-year-old man or woman uh, with a big university logo behind that person and have them sign paperwork, there's just no getting around it. Some of it's predatory. Um, in terms of an individual who uh, is having some debt forgiven, um, I think the same thing applies. In, you know, This is a chance to be, once you get certified, I mean, there's a few things. One, we're talking about, I'm very, I'm very economically driven. I grew up with no money. I thought I did a decent assessment of America. And I said, economic security is really important to me. It's just paramount to me for a lot of reasons. And by the way, that's not the playbook for a lot of people. A lot of people have decided they don't want to live to work. They want to work to live. They're going to lose, move to a lower cost uh, region. They're going <clears> to <throat> live modestly and have nice lives. There's nothing wrong with that. My playbook was I wanted 
real economic, I wanted to pursue wealth. And the algebra of wealth is, I think, pretty straightforward, and that is a focus on uh, a talent. Not what is your passion, but what is something you are good at naturally and you think you'd become great at. And invest the 10,000 hours in the requisite bullshit and grit or overcoming bullshit at corporate. The corporate world is totally unjust. Get used to it. Have the resilience to put up with it. Try and become outstanding at something. I don't care what it is. And then once you're outstanding at something, um, you'll start to make money from it. And then um, uh, live like a stoic. Try and figure out how little money you can spend. You know, I, I my first, you know, my junior and senior in college, I didn't have any money. There was this, every summer I used to go on this thing where I would just eat top ramen and bananas and milk. And I would try and put on 10 pounds of muscle. And I would try and spend less than $70 a week. That was my budget outside of my rent. And I trained me, you know, to kind of save a decent amount of money. Uh, from a very early age, I always had, uh, I always saved a little bit of money. And you've, you guys have seen this stuff. The power of compound interest. Of course. And time is just massive. And then the other thing is as soon as you start making some money, as soon as you start saving some money, just diversify. Just low-cost ETFs, diversification, because time, once you let time take over, it's just, it, I was you guys yesterday. I look at you and I think I'm them because there's something in our brains, because our species typically for most of the duration of our species on this planet, we didn't live past 35. So we can't imagine ourselves older than 35. So unless I see myself in the mirror and go, Jesus Christ, that dude's old. I talk to you guys and I think we're colleagues. I think we're the same age. And it goes so fast that if you can figure out a way at your age to save, you know, find a good job and save a thousand, two thousand, maybe if you're killing it, three thousand or more a month, in an instant when you're my age, even if you don't kill it, even if you don't sell your podcasting company, even if you don't join Salesforce and get a shit ton of options, you're still going to be financially secure. And financial security is just so important because kids in low income households have higher standing blood pressure. The majority of divorces are filed by women mm -hmm. and it's usually economics involved. People think the number one source of divorce is infidelity. It's not. It's something related to a financial breakdown in the household. Usually the man loses his job, has an emotional breakdown or his business goes out of business. So we don't talk about it because it feels crass. But I think uh, being very focused on the algebra of how you get to economic security and a key component of that is at your age, and I don't know your situations, but putting yourself in as many situations as possible and taking uncomfortable risks around finding a mate. Um, I, my wife, I met at the Raleigh Hotel at the pool, and I walked in, and I saw this woman, and she was with another woman and a guy, and it was the middle of the day, and I said, before I leave here, I'm going to go over to this strange woman sitting with another girl and a guy and introduce myself and try and get something going. And I've done that several times and immediately gotten vibe like, get the fuck away from me. And that's humiliating. That's humiliating. But occasionally, and even more often than not, because most people are kind, they'll start a conversation. And now my oldest boy's middle name is Raleigh because I took those uncomfortable risks. The most important decision, the most important thing in your life will be finding a great partner, someone who loves you, someone who's kind, someone who you really want to have sex with, someone who is economically responsible, everything is a little harder or a little easier with the wrong or the right partner. And so at your age, you want to be accepting invitations to dinner parties. You want to be expressing interest in people, even when you risk some level of humiliation or embarrassment and giving yourself as many opportunities as possible such that you can find what is, again, the elemental foundation of any society, and that is a productive relationship with someone else. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.